Okay, please welcome Cindy Latch to the lectern. All right, thank you. Let me load up my slides. All right, this is a very special time in the Toastmaster world. This is really where I think we turn a corner. So I wanna say, first of all, congratulations because we're here and we're all still working hard as a team together. But I see it as turning a corner because before the end of the year just seemed so far away. It was just a concept. But right now that is in our radar. In fact, today I got an email from Toastmasters that we can go in and pay our dues. So I've already gone in and paid the dues at my clubs and I challenge you to do the same and spread the word. But we're gonna to talk today about a topic I love, especially at this time of the year. And I call it run past the finish line. We need to all run past that finish line. So just a quick thing I wanna talk about, leave time for questions and input at the end. Let's talk about how are you all supporting your clubs? What information, how are you doing it with resources and information? Because you have a drive now through June 30th, not to be too particular, but I always used to say at 11.59 PM, you're still in the role that you're in. So we're going to talk about how are you supporting your clubs? Let's talk about contests and other things. And then I also really wanna talk a little bit about your Toastmaster growth because that continues to be important, absolutely important. So love this image. This is of course, Mount Everest. I love documentaries about Mount Everest. I've read books about it. I can't get enough about it. And I think it's because first of all, I would never do it. I would never climb it, but I love the analogy that it paints for us. So you've all seen that concept of people they're gonna climb Mount Everest. So what do they do? They plan, they get a team, they practice, they have resources because there's no way you can do this, climb this without being prepared, having a team, having the things you need to do it. One thing that we all think about is, you know that picture when you summit and you stand there, they have to get back down too. So that's part of their plan. Their plan is to get there, but their plan is also to safely get back to completion. And that's always the image I keep in my mind as I look at the Toastmaster year or goals and objectives that I have is I'm climbing my own personal Mount Everest and just getting to the top isn't the victory. It's getting back home safely as well. So let's keep that in mind as we look at how we're going to work in this last portion of the Toastmaster year. Running past the finish line. I love this image. And I'm going to ask, does anyone know the story of Roger Bannister? Has anyone heard that name before? Yes. Okay, couple yeses. Okay, couple noes. Okay, well, we're gonna do a little mini history lesson. I love this story. So picture it, it's 1952. You're in the Olympics. You're in the 1500 meter race. Your name is Roger Bannister. And you place fourth because, well, you kind of have an unorthodox way of training. You're maybe not as committed as the other runners, but you decide then, you know what? Two years from now, I'm gonna break a record. And what was the record? It was running a mile in less than four minutes. Doctors, kinesiologists, sports medicine people, coaches, they all said it is not possible for the human being to run a mile in less than four minutes. It is not humanly possible. Your muscles can't do it. Your joints can't take it. You don't have the lung capacity to do this. So guess what? In May of 1954, Roger Bannister, started the race and you can actually go to YouTube and watch it, it is fascinating. He starts the race, he tends to linger back, that's his style. The other one guy, he can't do it. He still lingers back and then he does that famous Roger Bannister kick where he just takes off and he keeps running. And if you see way in the background of that picture, 
there's his next competitor, right back there. So they called the time. And when they made the announcement, they said he ran the time in three minutes, 59 seconds and four tenths of a second. So he was under by six tenths of a second. Well, guess what happened? Within a month, within two months, records started falling all over the world. People started breaking the four minute mile and they got faster and faster and faster. And why is that? Not because suddenly we became superhumans, but because someone broke the mental barrier. That mental barrier of you can't do this. This is not possible. This is too hard. Roger Bannister said, I'm going to do it. And he did it. And what he proved is, yes, the human body can do it. But what he proved more importantly is our own mental barriers are what tend to hold us back. That questioning, that doubting, will I be successful in this role? How am I going to deliver the resources to the people who I'm supporting? Think of Roger Bannister. He didn't get to that finish line and stop. He kept running. In case you watch the video, you're going to see eventually his coaches stop him and hug him and make him stop running because his momentum was so high, he couldn't stop. So remember that you're gonna run past the finish line. And the finish line for us is always 30th. That's the end of this Toastmaster year. But between now and June 30th, you are still in that race. You are still running in that race. And I think sometimes we forget it because it's just another day and another week and another month. So remember Roger Bannister, he decided to break the, the rule and what they said he couldn't do. He worked at it, he got the resources to do it, he had the team to do it, and then he did it. So let's talk about, we're all in a race, contests, this is contest season. So how many of you have run, and feel free to open your mic and let's just talk, how many of you have run a contest so far? How many of you have completed your contests? Awesome. So Karen, since I can't see everybody, can you give me a count about how many people out of the attendance here have said, yes, I have done my contest? I can't, can you raise your hands again? Torsten, Torsten, Division A, one, I think that's probably it. There might be one other. And Ed Moore, what division, what area? It was um, helping out with uh, completing uh, about three club contests. And also helping helping uh, Mr. Falcon with his area one contest last night. Awesome. So from what I understand, your area contests, because as area directors, you hold your area contests, they will run in February and a little bit into March. One thing that I know when I was a division director, all the area director contests have to be completed before we can effectively start to run our divisions. It's like a it's like a conveyor belt. And then all of the division contests need to be completed, paperwork done, information submitted before you can run your district contest. So one thing I ask is, are you prepared for your contest? Are your clubs prepared? Do they know what they're doing? Have you checked in with them? Oftentimes, People assume people know how to do this. So please make sure that you're checking in, that you're asking, how are you doing? Please invite me to your contests at the club level and really plan to execute as an area director and ask your peers for help. That's some of the best resources you have. The other thing is division directors, you have the same thing. You have teams that you all need to pick from. So. I remember when I was especially in an area director role, the contest season became all consuming to me, meaning it's what I focused on. It had so many loose ends. I was always felt like I was planning. What is a Toastmaster contest? It is simply an extension of our educational program. So the contest does a couple of things though. It actually drives Toastmasters to improve their skills. 
I had people say to me, you know, I'm a little nervous about completing in, competing in a contest. And I would always say, did you practice? And they said, well, not really. I said, maybe you should be nervous, right? So we need to practice. You need to practice doing the contest, practice getting the contest prepped, have a, have a dress rehearsal of your contest. So, you know, they say practice, practice, practice. I mean, that's that old joke, right? A guy gets in a car in New York and says, I need to get to Carnegie Hall. How do I get there? And the cab driver says, practice, 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 right? That's how you get there. So contests do drive us to practice and improve, but what they also do is they serve as role models so that I can watch as a new member or a member that's held back and say, I, you did it, you survived, I'm gonna give it a try. So really keep that in mind, that your contest is not the be all and end all of your area year. In fact, it's just another step on that race because when your contests are done, you're going to have several more months of work where you can support your clubs. So enjoy your contests, but remember, that's just the touchstone to the next event. Another thing, and this is so easy, and I have to remind myself, don't forget your personal growth while you're in your roles. Don't forget yourself. Use your visits, use your presentations to really look at how can I use this in my pathways process? Don't do the incredible work you're doing and not give yourself that credit through this process as well. You need to get credit while you are serving others. I think that's vitally important. So now we get to the real meat, I think, of area and division directors. So what do you do to support your clubs? And I just listed a few things, and then I kind of like to open it up and hear from you. What do you do? You visit. And I just don't mean the visit that you do your area director. I'm a big believer in you visit a club several times throughout the year, especially now since it's virtual. It's so wonderful that they have that trust and relationship. Your phone calls, your emails or texts. Some people like to just receive texts nowadays. Question I have, and I heard somebody mention it before, how are your area and division council meetings going? And how are your area director visits going? Because they are vitally important. And I'm gonna just open this up and ask, in your opinion, why are area director visits so vital in your process? Who would like to share some thoughts? Cindy, if I could jump in with my thoughts. Please. For me, I think the most important thing about the area director visits is really putting a name to a face, right? We're often communicating with each other by phone calls, emails, text messages. But I think there's something different about sitting down and actually meeting face-to-face -face and forming that personal connection, which you don't really quite get from virtual interactions. And when you meet a person, you really get to know them, then it becomes a lot easier to foster that uh, relationship where you can help support one another. Whereas if you're just a name on an email and you ask for help, Oftentimes that falls on deaf ears. Whereas if it's someone you know, you're much more willing to jump in. Absolutely, absolutely. I remember when I was a, I say, when I was a squeaky new Toastmaster, I, I saw somebody walk into our meeting. I was probably in for about three months, maybe. Somebody walked into a meeting and somebody else said to me, who is that? And I'm like, well, I don't know because I'm new. And it was the area director and no one knew who they were because they'd really never come forward before. They'd really never made themselves known before. So the process of doing the area director report, to your point, was kind of clunky because nobody knew who they were. And it was sort of like, hi, I'm here to do your report. And, and it felt awkward and uncomfortable for them. So excellent, excellent observation. So um, what, what other purposes do your reports serve? If I could have other feedback. I can uh, say something. I think the the area director's reports, and uh, as Jeffrey was saying, it's not just the face to face element. It's the the element that you're part of a bigger picture. That there is a resource there. There's a broader organization, and it allows for those who are interested to see that 
to understand that there is a, there is a, a progression that's possible for leadership and a, a an ability to tap into a lot of the knowledge and the expertise in a wider sphere. Absolutely, great observation. I I remember actually area director was perhaps the role I enjoyed best. In fact, if you keep growing in your district and ultimately look at becoming a region advisor, I've always felt a region advisor role is like being an area director on steroids, right? You're just doing it in a larger area. So the area director role, I completely concur that I would go as an area director after going there several times and people, I would say, you know, tell me about your experience with Toastmasters. And they're like, well, I go on the first and third Wednesday to the library. So their view of Toastmasters was that very small, Brian, that I, I go to a meeting and they love the meeting and I think that's great. But when you come in and you say, I'm here, here are all the other resources you have, it's sort of like you create this ever expanding awareness of, oh, it's not just the library on the first and third Wednesday. There's five or six clubs in my area. You know what we should do? Let's have a joint meeting with everyone. I'm going to challenge myself to do one of those before the year is up. You might, as an area and division director, team up and say, let's bring all our area clubs together and each of us hold just a fun meeting later in the year. Maybe it's an all table topics meeting where you go to have fun. So what you do, Brian, is you're right. You create this awareness of Toastmasters is this. Wait, it's this. Wait, it's the district. Wait, it's, it's going to the Bahamas. And then it's having this global thought of what is the Toastmaster experience. And, and you're right, only at that point, a lot of people are so speaking oriented that they realize, hey, there is this other track I can be in, which is I can practice being a leader. So excellent, excellent observations. And you're there to role model it for them. So other thoughts, um, why are area director reports important? Like when you do the report, what are your feelings on that data? Tom has his hand up. Are you prepared yes, to answer Tom. that, Tom? Uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? I'm on a set of earbuds. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, awesome. Great to be here. Sorry, I can't turn the camera on. Uh, I wanted to share a little story that hopefully ties in all the, the questions you asked that uh, you know, my definition of a leader, and it's something that I've been taught and I've lived is to create other leaders and leaders have to be visible. So I had something happen just recently. One of my clubs, White Rock Club, uh, the president sent me a message by email and said, hey, we're doing a, a theme night on mentoring and could you come and speak to us? And she said, you don't have to do a pathway speech. We know you're a business person. And so I, I said, sure. At the same time, I decided to create an opportunity for my own goals. So I thought, hmm, I think I'll turn it into a pathways topic. But then I uh, saw so the topic. Uh, then I had a request from uh, Delta Power Talkers to help them out in their club. I thought maybe I can do a double whammy here. So I went and spoke at Delta Power Talkers. And then I came back to my club. And it happened that the pathway I was trying to complete required me to speak once, get feedback, speak again. <clears throat> so I attended the White Rock Club. And at the end of my speech, they gave me a, an award. And I decided, how am I going to wow this club? How am I going to serve them other than just showing up and being the air director? So I actually went into the, the Toastmaster system and I printed, I was sent to Staples. I got uh, 10 certificates. So I asked the president, who all in your club is on the mentor program? So at eight people, I printed these beautiful certificates that acknowledged them as mentors. The, the president and I signed them. And then at the end, we did a special award ceremony. We said, hey, all the mentors, please stand up. And they came up, they got awarded their certificates and it blew them away. And then at the end of the meeting, they gave the president, uh, closed the meeting. She said, I'd like Tom to come up. And she said, I just want to tell all of you, she said, we've never had Mary director visit us three times this year so far. And I've completed both my area visit reports. But she said, the thing is, I emailed Tom in 4.6 minutes after I emailed him. So 
So she actually remembered that. He actually replied and said, I'm in. And so that's kind of, so the club loves me, but I love them. And when you, as a leader, show up and serve, they go, whoa, he's serious and he's helping us. And then at the same time, now they're saying, hey, Tom, how can we help you get your, your DTM or how can we help you? So sorry, that was a bit of a long story, but uh, oh, it's just awesome. Great. And the visits, the visits aren't just reports. The visits are so much more, you guys. And uh, yes. glad to share that story. Thank you. Awesome story because right, it didn't take tons of effort on your part, but the impression that it made was so great. Now, one thing oh, and I challenge you one, all. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, one more, Cindy. One more thing. Yes. Uh, I'm kind of letting the cat out of the bag, but tomorrow morning, uh, I'm doing my home club meeting, and my level one plus a level two, somebody else just crushed. Tomorrow will get us to presidents distinguished. So that's the end of the story. So it's like you can connect the dots. I'm so excited. Nice. That wow. What a great way to put a cherry on top of that. So awesome. You should feel great. And isn't that really what it is? It's that little step that we take that might take a moment. It might take a little thought. You might run some things through the printer, but absolutely, that's what really endears people to you. I always say you want them to imprint on you like little ducklings, right? You want them to always say, I don't know what the answer is, but I know who can answer it. Now, one thing I challenge people on area director reports is be real. And by that, I mean, if there were two people there, the meetings weren't planned, nobody cares anymore, put that in the report. You know, you, you need to be gracious as you note the facts, because I can tell you there was nothing more shocking when uh, I was district director, then the area directors were like, everything's great. This is fabulous. This cup is great. And they got all exceptionals. And then uh, four weeks later, they put in their dissolvement papers because there was only a couple people there and they were just tired, right? They were burned out. So as you go in, have that very neutral eye and really be an observer because what you're laying on them, you're getting them the resources they need, which is vitally important. So you're an area director and a division director until the end of this Toastmaster year. So you really need to own it. I really challenge you to be all in. What I did real quickly, I just looked at your uh, district page the other day, and this is, this is where you're currently at with your paid clubs. So you're down, which can mean that some of these clubs have not paid their dues from last. They don't have that last member in. So as an area director, you need to know that. You need to familiarize yourself with this. So I always say this is the club growth director's bucket with your help and the Toastmasters help. This bucket will become activated on or around April 7th. This is the PQD's measure, right? This is how many clubs will come out distinguished. Well, we know one's president already, but your players in both of these, and then the middle one is payments, not paid members, but payments. And that's really everyone's to work on. How do I keep people engaged? How do I keep people realizing the value of this experience? So really watch the numbers. The numbers tell your story. And remember to plant seeds. What I mean is, as you move through your year as area director, plant the seed. You guys have mentioned it. Keep your eye open. Plant the seed for leaders. Plant the seed for, you look like you really enjoy this. I'd love to hook you up to people. Plant the seeds because the seeds you plant eventually grow. And those are the people that down the road will enter in as leaders in clubs and areas, divisions and district, and even beyond. But in addition to being that planter or gardener, you also have to be a shepherd. I firmly believe as area directors, especially and division directors, you are a shepherd and the shepherd guards the flock and sometimes they need to pick up somebody that's fallen down and really move them along and help them and provide those resources. You're doing amazing work. So remember, the finish line is really just the beginning, meaning as you're ending your year, you too should be looking for, what's my next goal? What is the next experience I'm seeking? Because you are really proving how vital you are to the district this year. And please consider moving on because there's always a need. 
So as we look at wrapping up your year and running past that finish line, what are some ideas, thoughts, or maybe observations you have about how are you going to keep your momentum going in this last phase of the year? Yes, Jeffrey. So my idea is just having something scheduled with all of your clubs, and that provides a routine, right? So I know that in some cases, life gets really busy, or your energy reserves might be a bit lower. But if you have that item on your calendar, well, you've already pre-committed to it. So then that makes it very easy to continue having, again, that presence. In right, the absolutely. I, I'm a big believer. Don't keep a to-do list. A to-do list is a flat, one-dimensional list of things. Take your to-do list and put it on as calendar items. You've moved it out of the flat linear into time. So book all of your visits. Book all of your visits now through the end of the year. Book when you're going to call people. Just make notes because if it becomes systemic, you're right. I think it becomes easier. Anyone exactly. else have a thought? How do you want to rejuvenate yourself in this last stretch for that race? I'll ask a question. Are you helping each other as area directors? Are you supporting each other at your contests, taking roles in each other's experiences? How are you doing that? So I can share something. Yes, Torsten. So we had our contest last night and uh, the other two area directors helped out with the contest. I'm very th thankful for that. And the second thought was um, what I wanted to do now that I finished my contest, so it's it's great. It's a lot of things off my chest. I I decided to to actually go to Vancouver Island and visit the club that only meets in person. So that's something that I couldn't do because they only I, I I'm far away from that. I have to take the ferry, and I could only visit the online clubs. But um, I really want to put on my agenda to visit the in person clubs or the in person club. Absolutely. I yeah. think you're right. That face-to-face -face really not only is good for them, but it kind of reminds you of why am I doing this, right? What is this? I'm really having the impact on people. I'm that gardener, but I'm also their shepherd, which is really a wonderful thing as you watch yourself growing and you get to see them growing. One more. We have time for one more. How are you going to energize yourself to finish this race? One more thought. Who's got another thought? Yes, I see two more. So we'll first we'll go with Elizabeth and then Brian, you'll close us out. I wanna keep visiting the clubs in my area. I don't want to just do the visits that are necessary for the reports. I liked one of my the clubs I visited so much that I actually joined the club. And so now I'm part of two clubs in the same area. And it's been really interesting, actually. I've learned a lot from visiting the clubs. It's really good to see how differently the different meetings are run and what one club seems to do really well and another one doesn't. And it's uh, actually fascinating to see because all the clubs have very experienced Toastmasters and they are all run very differently. And that has been actually the most interesting learning experience for me. Yeah, it is. And the other thing you can do is if a club does something well and somebody else doesn't, I created what was what I called the adopt a club. So maybe you can hook them up and hope that they support each other. So Brian, give us your parting comment. Well, it, to me, it all comes back to the newest members and I, I know it can be bewildering sometimes. People are just, you know, facing their fears or they're trying some stuff on. And it's those people that I really like to focus on and encourage, even though they might be kind of, their head would be spinning and they're trying to figure out, well, I don't, I don't know even know what I'm doing. What am I supposed to do? And just encouragement, 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 and constantly you know, letting people know that that it's it's 
not something you do and get done in six months. You're, it's a lifetime. Yes, it's an evolutionary process, right? And the more you do it, the better you get. And it's that very wonderful cycle that reinforces itself. So my message tonight was run past that finish line, do this job till June 30th, feel really good when you look back at the end that you have really done your best in supporting your clubs, supporting the members, because it's always about our members' experience. Thank you and reach out if I can ever help you. Karen, back to you. Thank you so much, Cindy. It is always wonderful. And I, I am so delighted that uh, my team wanted you back again. So that is wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you again. Thank you so much. And uh, a, good, a round of applause, please, for Cindy. And she's also a past region advisor as well. So, you know, we've got a couple of real, real experts on the call here tonight. 